This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Matthias Huna. Is that, is that close? Very good. Thank okay. you. Okay, Thank you. Uh, the director, and were you one of the writers as well? No, it's, okay. a, it's an idea I came up with, okay. but I okay. developed it with I'll, the I'll give you credit for it. <laughs> the director, at the very least, of Cockneys vs. Zombies, uh, which, as you might imagine, is a zombie action comedy. I don't know, maybe the name gives that away. I don't know. Well, it's uh, it's definitely. Um, I was very specific about what uh, zombie subgenre I wanted to be in, and I wanted it to be a zombie adventure. I call it the zombie okay. venture. I can I can dig zombie adventure. It's about you know bank robbers who happen to rob a bank during a zombie apocalypse. I guess would be fair. Yeah, absolutely. So it's about a couple of kids who rob a bank in order to save but their the, grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pension home from being torn down to make way to some anonymous developments in East London. And then just as they're in the bank, um, um, that very development unearths a black plague pit going back to the 16th century, yes. um, which unleashes the zombie virus upon East London. So now when the kids come out, they realize that even though the zombies are slow, their, their grandparents are slower with their walkers and they're like which walking very, sticks. Which is very funny. Yeah, that so, works out very well. Were you a zombie fan going into this movie, or is this something like you just had a unique idea and you're like, I want to run with this? Because, I mean, zombies are such a cultural icon at this point. I mean, it's like you think of Walking Dead, all that sort of stuff. It's become such a, was it World War Z is coming out this year? I think you beat them to the punch, honestly. But um, <laughs> cool. were, yeah. were you a big fan of zombies growing up or anything like that? Well, yeah, I mean, first of all, of course, when you start developing a movie, it takes a long time. So I sort of started with this before The Walking Dead came out. And, you know, it was at a time when everyone was doing fast moving zombies. And it, you know, people were saying to me, well, you can't even do slow moving zombies anymore because people won't be scared. They, they, they're used to fast zombies now. You have to go faster. I'm like, no, 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 no gotta go slow because the films i was really influenced in were you know to be honest that happened in um in the 80s uh, when i was um growing up in school and um one of my friends um passed me like a grubby copy of on vhs of uh, peter jackson's dead alive fantastic and movie <laughs> very very funny movie as well yeah i remember seeing that when i was like 10 or something that was a great movie and to be honest i feel like to me that is the zombie comedy i mean you know, I, I love that film, and I think it's, it's so gory, yet so funny. And it's, it, it, you're, you're absolutely right. But you, you bring up something interesting. I mean, Cockneys vs. Zombies has a very recent, uh, massive uh, history of zombies in the UK. Sort of begins. Obviously, 28 Days Later is a big mm. one, and then Shaun of the Dead. Was that something that you thought about going into us, like... I got this cool idea, but do I really want to do a zombie film? <laughs> like, there, there's there's so many good ones or at that point. That, I mean, this is early 2000s, so it's been a while. Since well, uh, yeah, at that point, everyone was doing vampires, and I was oh, like, God. oh, I thank, can't possibly thank do you vampires. For, yeah, thank you for going <laughs> away from that. I, I will thank you right away for that. I mean, there's there's a few considerations. Practical ones are very simple that, um, you know, if you're doing a, a sort of indie-level, budget-level horror movie, you can't do werewolves or aliens. So um, zombies and yeah, vampires is a, is a very practical consideration on that level. Yes. Um, I was, ve of course, very aware of um, films like Shaun of the Dead. And then while I was filming, Zombieland came out. Warm Body is also amazing. Mm, you know, yeah, there's a, a lot one. of great films. And you kind of keep thinking, well, is that going to be the last zombie comedy? I think it's just a genre. And hopefully, um, you know, by adding a, a new twists and turns to it, you know, you can keep um, having fun with it. I mean, um, and then specifically, of course, what... Um, what I was really excited about was, um, you know, uh, Shaun of the Dead is um, like a romantic comedy set yes. in, in posh north, middle class right. north, north that, London, no. you know, and everyone is a bit twee and all that sort of thing. And I think, um, so it's a rom-com zom. Yes. Um, to me, really, where the idea for Cockneys vs. Zombies came from was when I was working with a, a couple of Cockney actors on a web series that I was directing. And um, there was only side characters in that. But... Um, and it was with, <laughs> with vampires at the time. And, um, and, um, but um, suddenly, they became, when, you, when they were faced, those kind of, you know, these beefy criminals with shotguns and, you know, joking around and pumped up, uh -huh. you know, energy, you know, looking at a vampire, you know, being used to never show fear, never back down, never take shit from anyone, you know, and they're going, oh, all right, handsome, ch ch cock the shotgun and go have some of that and um, I loved just that attitude to me was like the 
the kind of key to this oh. film, to Courtney's versus Zombies, where you just have this attitude of a protagonist who doesn't give a shit. It's like, what, zombies? Who fucking cares? Well, that, that, Let's sort them out. You well, know. That was sort of the funny thing is, I don't know if somebody was describing it when they were first like suggesting I check out the film ones. They compared it to uh, Snatch, which was an interesting film because you never think like Snatch and zombies. Like that's a great idea. I like I like your idea. Of, yeah, it's not a posh film, sort of like in the vein of Shaun of the Dead. I also like that you didn't try and shoehorn a romance necessarily into the film because that feels like. So many movies nowadays feel like, okay, it's not a complete movie unless we have some sort of like romantic storyline going. And there's a little bit of that, but it's not, it's not the front and center story like it is in Shaun of the Dead. Well, and um, you know, if you talk to distributors, they will tell you, well, if you do a comedy horror, you have to have a romantic comedy at the core of it to make it marketable. You, know, you look at Warm Bodies or Shaun of the Dead, they're marketed as romantic comedies. Which is even weirder, though, if you think about Warm Bodies, because he's actually a zombie falling in love oh, in yeah, that movie, which is very, very, like, that was my whole confusion going to that movie, which film is excellent. I very much enjoy that movie, but still mm. just like as a dead person falling in love with a living person is a very sort of bizarre concept to try and sell i don't know yeah i think it's great i love, I love that film and um you know who, anyone who tries something like that out there and then is financially successful with it you know hats off and who raised oh, good yeah. for all of us you yeah. know um and uh, you know on the other hand we did try to put a little bit of romance there's um you know alan ford is sort of a little bit enamored with um honor blackman um, as, yes. uh, aka pussy galore and um you know, he very much thanked me on the day as well that um, I wrote that into the script. And, um, it, you know, it's a subtle little detail. It, but um, <laughs> it's, it's cute. It's not like, you know, you're watching the movie the entire time. Like, oh, yeah, here we go. Here's the romance that we're going to get, you know, which no. is nice. I, I mean, it's the action and the comedy are really a lot of fun in the movie. How challenging was that sort of as you speak of, you know, indie films having limitations of not being able to do <laughs> aliens and stuff like that? You guys actually have a lot going on in this movie. It seems like. That alone would be challenging. Yeah, well, in my um, non-knowledge, I was sort of stubborn and kind of saying, well, I know we don't have much money, but I'm not going to do a contained horror movie. Everyone else is doing that. I'm not doing it. And uh, producers going, well, you know, how about, you know, about that car crash? Are you sure we need to do that? And about this big sort of action scene on the docks? Are you sure? You know, and I kept saying, yes, we are going to do it. Um, then on the day, I was sort of faced, of course, with um, having to choreograph five to ten lead actors, 40 background, gunfighting, you know, two cameras and all that sort of it, kind of big movie stuff. But um, with this sort of schedule of a short movie, so you know, it was um, it was adventurous. There was out of the whole shooting schedule, there was only one day where three people were talking to each other in a room, and um, it was actually the last day of shooting. And I was like, oh, okay, that's how I was supposed to. Oh, I should have done that all the way uh, through. No, but I'm glad I, I kind of um, I tried um, I tried to just aim a bit more epic, I suppose. On a, on and I think I mean I think you succeeded, which is one of the confusing things as far as I could tell. Is this your feature debut? It is, yeah. That yeah. seems like a pretty bold thing to be like, fuck it, I'm going all in. Instead of like, you know, let's get like five people do a light comedy. You know, this will be easy. You're like, all right, we're gonna have special effects. We're gonna have like blood effects. We're gonna have all sorts of people. Like we're gonna have 40 extras in the scene. Like how? How complicated was that as sort of a first-time feature director? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was complicated. <laughs> I mean, um, my background in music videos and commercials helped in a, in a way that I'm quite sort of okay around set and figuring those things out. But um, um, it was just at the speed of, of kind of working that, that amount of things. And, you know, you know, even if you just have five people shooting machine guns in a scene, that's, you know, that's tricky stuff to, to, to kind of do in... 30 minutes you know what oh, I mean yeah, absolutely. Um, as the sun's going yeah. down and um, and they're trying to they're 80 years old and trying to get on a boat you know all that sort of stuff that you kind of just go oh, really on a boat well, on... <laughs> was, it, was it difficult to get like funding for this movie like I mean you come from a music video background so I mean yeah you can handle sort of large uh, events and stuff like that totally but like, you know, you're like, okay, I want to do an hour and a half film, or I'm going to have all sorts of action, blah, blah, blah. Or people, people, did you just find the right people to work with? Or what was it exactly, how you got this up and running? Well, I mean, I actually, I mentioned it to him um, when um, I was working on this uh, the web series, and I um, mentioned to my production manager at the time, and going, oh, we need to do this movie with the, you know, with the Cockneys and, and zombies and stuff. And, you know, and um, it's such a good idea, it'd be so fun. And, um, 
he came back a week later and said, look, Matthias, I set up our movie. I'm like, what movie? He went, Courtney's versus Zombies. Um, I'm like, oh, wicked. So he went on and he pitched the, the concept to a few sales agents and, and we man, you know, managed to persuade one of them to come wow. on board, and then we, which was great. And we started developing a script. And then as we, you know, once we had the first draft, um, Studio Canal came on board, which... Um, um, were called Optimum at the time, but Studio Canal kind of funded the next level of development. And you know, I think um, while you, I mean, it's always hard to get those things off the ground. But um, you know, and, and developing scripts takes time, and then raising money takes time. But um, I guess in retrospect, it, you know, everyone struggles to get stuff made. It wasn't it, in the greater scheme of things, it was an okay struggle. It got made. It yeah, didn't no, take I mean, more than four years, three years, you I don't know. You an interesting point, like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you right off the bat, you know, the idea of Cockneys versus Zombies. Very clever idea, like, very, w w bravo on that. But what is it like actually sort of, you know, m materializing that um, once you have an idea? Because, you know, you th I think about, like, films that have a great concept, but end up being far less interesting than you imagine, like uh, Snakes on a Plane mm. or Cowboys versus Aliens. These things that you like look at the title and you're like, oh shit, this sounds great. But then they, you, you watch them and you're like, yeah, I guess that was okay. This is one of the few times I felt like there's a really fun sort of script story beyond just a title of just like, okay, we're just going to have cockneys and zombies. But what else do we need? We told you this is going to be awesome, you know? So there's, there, it, it felt almost. It feels more organic, I guess, and sort of like the story and the title is just sort of a clever capper on that. Mm. I mean, I think I was, I was, once I pitched the idea, I very quickly wrote down like a one or two page outline, okay, this is what the short story should be. And, you know, I think um, I always had the bank heist in at the beginning and then the, the warehouse. So the, the three acts were always in place. Um, but then I was really stubborn about not not going ahead with the movie before we all felt that the script was good enough because you know like you said you could sort of find a certain amount of money with a high concept and then just do it quickly and that, that sort of I was very stubborn not to do that and I think um, you know I think that's kind of as a director that's your stubbornness is one of your mm. your um, only um, or your best kind of um, tools everyone going why don't we do this and he's going yeah great but no, we're going to do this, you know, in the, in, because, you know, in, in this sort of big wave and, and, and the kind of big castle in the sky that you build when you make a movie, you just have to be stubborn and always kind of go, no, no, it's a castle, not a shed. It's a castle. That was great. <laughs> and it's up there, not down there, up there. <laughs> you know, that, that's what I try to do all the time, hope, you know, and really try to push everyone to, to believe in it. Because especially with the title like Cockneys vs. Zombies, if I had done, you know, I just wanted to make a good movie that, um, you know, try to cast really interesting actors and not, um, not, not make it a, a quick cash in on an idea. Kind oh, of no, thing. totally. I mean, th that's, that's definitely one of the most important things is, is making the developed idea. I mean, it's, it's funny, you know, it's, it is a zombie movie. But actually, I, I'm trying to just remember. Oh yeah, okay. The film that it reminded me most of, strangely enough, is Attack the Block, mm. because it's not about this like upscale group of people who are trying to deal with this. And Attack the Block's about aliens and stuff like that. So obviously, a very different film. <laughs> but it's. I mean, it's. 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 it's I, I, I like that these people are very relatable. These are. These are just like average people. These are not like elite military people against zombies. These are not like. You know, as you mentioned, like rich suburban Londonites versus zombies. And Grant, don't get me wrong, I love Shaun of the Dead, very funny film. Uh, but it's it's it it has such a more like I guess I don't I hate to say the word raw sort of feel to it. But like I feel like the actors you got in the movie so perfectly captured the concept of the movie. What was it like in terms of casting people for it? Were these people you had just worked with before and were familiar with, or was it something that you really had to work to find the people? Well, I think, um, I mean, first of all, uh, it, it was really crucial to me to try to get interesting cars that, uh, you know, you'd kind of go, oh, I wouldn't have expected those guys in this sort of movie. And um, but um, most of all, I, I wrote the, we wrote the film, James Moran and me, for um, for Alan Ford specifically. We kind of thought, OK, so the one actor we need to have. That's awesome. Um, you know, we're the one actor who's sort of like um, it, it, who, it, 
it doesn't get more cockney than Alan Ford, basically. And we thought, well, if we, even if we would surround him with, you know, with, um, with Spaniards or anyone who's sort of as far removed from cockney as possible, he would just take them under his wing and just mm. kind of go, all right, so this is what you fucking do, <laughs> and, uh, and turn them into cockneys in front of our eyes. Awesome. So I, I kind of felt like, t- to me, he symbolized like the, everything about um, East London that... Um, that the movie wants to capture mm-hmm. so he's like oh, a oh, yeah. doesn't show emotions sort of but has a heart of gold looks out for his family but has trouble relating you know all those sort of things oh, um, oh, yeah. and um and a sort of is kind of strong and can knock someone out punch a zombie to the floor and handle his machine <laughs> guns you know um a real kind of cottony original so um you know he can and he you know in, in real life he's a real gent as well actually too and it's not not scary at all <laughs> he's the nicest guy um but um, so luckily he said yes, and then you know it was a process of um, you know Michelle Ryan was actually one of the first actresses we signed on because um, I always wanted to have a strong woman role, and she's fantastic. She's great, yeah. yeah. She was a lot of fun in it, playing the cousin of the, Ex- the bank robber. Exactly, exactly. And then we were just um, you know I, I met um, Honor Blackman for coffee. You know that's what you do, and you talk about it, and you try to. Um, <laughs> excite people about your vision for the movie and um she you know thankfully um agreed to it and you know she grew up in in east london as a cockney but then she had elocution lessons and now she's very very well spoken um so it was nice to bring her back to her roots a little bit and you know we made her swear in one scene which is sort of in you know people in england get really shocked about because she would never use any foul language anymore these days um and she's you know she's a strong woman she's one of the oldest uh, members in the cast but um she was feisty and fighting and kind of awesome. knocking out the zombies with the sledgehammer. Yeah, she was, she was up for, you know, she was up for, she was up for trouble. She was great. She was great. Uh, inspiration for us. And then, you know, on the young side, you know, it was really fantastic to get um, Rasmus Hardiker from Your Highness mm-hmm. and Harry Treadaway, who's going to be in um, Lone Ranger soon. And um, they were kind of um, a great mix because... Um, um, Rasmus is sort of known of was sort of the funny sidekick in Your Highness, so he wanted right, to play yeah, a yeah. stronger role, and um, so he uh, cast him as this sort of older brother who has the authority, but of course he's also funny and you know, was great at improvising. And then Harry has sort of been in lots of really, you know, very um, arty indie movies like Fish Tank as well, and mm-hmm. sort of very well on stage, you know, very well regarded method actor. And he wanted to just play someone fun and young and different, you know, so um, it was sort of a really good mix to work with them. And, you know, of course, um, Georgia King, who is now in The New Normal as one of the leads, she's amazing. And everyone else, you know, it was great working with her. And then, you know, last but not, you know, of course, there, um, we cast Richard Bryars, who is um, one of the comedy legends in, in UK TV. And he sadly passed away um, in February. But um, it was sort of, it was an amazing experience working with him um, who you know when you have an actor that comes on set and has 40 years of comedy experience yeah, you know it, it, it sort of starts with um, you know even when you do war jobs or you have Alan Ford going no 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 I have to have a really sharp suit I need to look really <laughs> smart you know everyone is like I don't want to look old I don't want to look old I want to look young and fresh and then um, and then Richard goes oh okay no I just want to have slippers a bathrobe and a funny hat and um, <laughs> and you just kind of go okay okay and then you, you put it on and you kind of you just kind of go yeah that's great that's so funny and you, you know you, he knows exactly how to create this that's character awesome. and you know and then you watch him on set and you know take a line like oh it's a zombie and turn it into oh it's a zombie it's and great. you know you, you know he you kind of um, he's just comedy gold and it was such a uh, terrific pleasure to work with someone like that and you know very good chase scene I guess you would call it in the movie with him which is very memorable. Yeah, I mean that's kind of like to me the the kind of key to the movie. You know, oh, right. the the zombies are slow, but the pensioners are slower. That's yeah. kind of the that's kind of what I felt is when I thought about what can we bring to the zombie movie genre that um you know you haven't seen in any other zombie film. Which you know to me that's the key on why do I want to make this movie? I have to add something to the canon of of the genre, and I, and I hope that the few scenes. I mean, there's that. There's, I think there's a we tried it throughout to kind of just give you something you've never seen before. And I don't want to give anything away. Yeah, but, um, I, th- I think you did a good job of doing something different, thank you. even though it's a, a, a trope that people are sort of generally familiar with. Uh, so the film is playing at SIF. What's next for it? Where can people find out more information about it? You know, I'm sure other people are going to want to see it after that's all. Yeah, no, absolutely. So the film's coming out on the 2nd of August in the U.S. in oh, cinemas great. and VOD. Um, and I think on DVD over Halloween. So, um, you know, awesome. if, you, if you can... Look, 
If you like it, if you like what you hear, go and see it in the cinema because, you know, every time you go to the cinema, you support good movies and yes. indie movies. And, um, you know, every time you go and see a film that uh, is a bit different, then um, other filmmakers get to make those movies totally. and you'll see more of them. Um, and then there's, there's a Facebook page, Cockneys vs. Zombies, and Cockneys vs. Zombies uh, movie, I think, for the American side. And is that a dot com or dot th This is on, on Facebook. Okay. Sla uh, Facebook Press, slash I'll put it, I'll put it down here. Yeah, and then um, you can also um, if you want to have behind the scenes stuff and photos and uh, storyboards um, my, uh, my own Facebook page Matthias Hohn director um, like that one you'll get loads of um, behind the scenes stuff and other goodies and um, find me on Twitter and all that yeah, sort of stuff yeah I was going to say uh, what, <laughs> do you have anything else you want people to know about that you have coming up after this and I know I just found out that you had a Twitter so what's your Twitter oh people? it's Matthias Hohn that's nice and easy it's very simple remember. yes um and, um, well, I, I just, I've been developing a science fiction script for the last year with an American writer called Ian Shaw. Cool. And, um, and we very recently had the great news that um, 20th Century Fox bought the wow. script. And, um, very cool. And um, I'm developing, I had a meeting last week with all the producers and executives who, you know, work on X-Men and wow. Wolverine and that sort of thing. So, um I'm very excited about That's it. Great, yeah. Yet, you know, it's, it's the um, onus is on, on, on us, the team, to, you know, bring it to the next level and hopefully get it greenlit within that system. But, um, you know, I think um, it's, it's super exciting. It's a film I'm really excited about. It's, um, no vampires it's, it's, in that one. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> it's a science fiction thing and it's got sort of holographic. As long as there are no vampires, it. I'm totally on board with you okay. at this point. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Matthias. And thank you guys I, for listening. I wish you luck with the film and uh, check out more reviews at McGuffin. That's McGuff.in. And uh, we'll see you later. Fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the second style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I